Kentucky has been plagued with these strange UFO phenomenon and other bizarre occurrences all over Henderson County. But before we get into today's episode, be sure to go ahead and smack that like and subscribe button for more storytelling of the mysterious and supernatural, just like this one. Let's go. In today's video, we continue on our descent into the supernatural weirdness of Kentucky. If you haven't watched part one or two, you can do so right up here. Now, pause for a moment, if you will, to ponder a simple question. How much time do you spend during the course of an average day looking up at the sky? For most of us, the time could be measured in mere seconds. We hurry down our roads to and from our jobs, facing the problems and joys of our intricate lives dead ahead, seldom ever glancing upwards to that which does not directly concern us. Some residents, however, when they do bother to look, have been amazed at what they see taking place in Kentucky's unfriendly skies. Glowing lights, flying men, phantom airships, and giant birds or bird-like creatures. Rains of blood and flesh, frogs and fish. All these enigmas have been witnessed and attested to in this region. Barton's own experiences with aerial anomalies began in 1975 when Barton Nunnally was only nine years old. Even now, all these years later, the very first anomaly that he was ever exposed to at that young age remains, hands down, the most amazing thing that he has ever witnessed with his own eyes. Several members of his family and himself were returning home to Spotsville, Kentucky in Henderson County. They were coming back from a trip to town for groceries and such. Barton was sitting in the back seat by the passenger side window. His older brother, by one year, Dean, was sitting next to him. They were both clutching as many of the month's issues of important comic books as they could possibly afford and eagerly awaiting to make it home to start reading and discussing them. They had been on the long gravel road on Mound Ridge Road. Only a minute or two when Barton happened to glance up over the trees to his right. He will never forget what he saw in that moment. A large cloud bank hung in the distant sky and as Barton had watched, the middle portion of this began to roll swiftly outward until it had formed a roughly circular hole in the middle of which Barton was shocked to see sat a small castle made of brownish gray stone. Barton could see it so clearly that, had he wanted to, he could have counted each and every stone. Two lofty towers rose from the main body of the turreted structure the one on the left being slightly shorter in height than the one on the right. Each tapered at the top, forming points, and from the spires, a long, thin, bright red banner billowed in the easterly wind. The colors were very vivid, especially the redness of the banners, which seemed more brilliant than ordinary. At the front and in the middle of this amazing structure was positioned a broad wooden door rounded at the top and gilded in what looked like a new iron. In fact, the whole thing seemed to be at once incredibly ancient and newly constructed. Stunned, Barton grabs his brother's arm and points out the window and managed to say, look, look. His mouth dropped open, his eyes lit up much as his own with his brother saying, I see it, Bart, I see it. As they round the last turn in the road, some taller trees had obscured the side and, much to both their disappointments, when the way was clear again, they saw that the hole in the cloud had closed up and the castle was forever gone. No similar Kentucky account exists, but to Barton's knowledge, it is an interesting note that they both told their mother what had happened and she had believed them without question. Barton thought this was strange until she proceeded to recount an episode from her very own childhood. Her and her sister, Pauline, now deceased, were out in one of their favorite wooded areas where they used to go be alone and talk when, upon looking up at the sky, they were astounded to see little log cabins among the clouds. It was so clear and vivid, she had told Barton, that they could count every log. 
This happened in Smith Mills, Kentucky in the 1950s on Klondike Road, then a little more than a gravel path. Barton had remained convinced that this vision his brother and him had witnessed was not some waking dream or shared hallucination. This first experience with aerial enigmas so many years ago did instill in him the tendency to look off into the sky and take note of what might be going on above our heads. He still does. As a matter of fact and public record, the Bluegrass State claims no less than three of the nation's most highly publicized and thoroughly investigated cases of alleged extraterrestrial attacks, one of which ended with the death of a highly decorated and well-respected citizen of the Commonwealth. While the UFO phenomenon is by no means the only airborne mystery to be experienced here in Kentucky, three-fourths of the unexplained aerial activity reported in Kentucky can be attributed to this single phenomenon, and it's a mystery that doesn't seem to want to go away anytime soon. Most people living in today's modern societies are free to admit without much worry that they have seen something in the sky which they cannot explain. According to a Fox News broadcast on February 3rd, 2007, 40 million Americans claim to have seen UFOs. It has become the in thing in many social circles, but it was not always so. 30 years ago, those who came forward and admitted UFO experiences were ridiculed, ostracized by their communities, and labeled mentally unstable. They often lost their jobs, families, property, and all public respect because of what they claim to have seen or experienced at one point in time. This is largely in direct contrast with today's public views. Some polls have even suggested that as many as two-thirds of Americans now believe in at least the possibility of life on other planets, and it has become almost commonplace to see something unusual in the sky. This does not mean, however, that all UFOs are extraterrestrial vehicles originating from outer space. Many explanations can be, have been, used in attempts to rationally explain the UFO phenomenon. Lenticular clouds, ball lightning, weather balloons, unrecognized terrestrial crafts, the planet Venus. One or all of these subjects could conceivably, under the right conditions, be mistaken for something of more unusual nature. However, the first thing to become strikingly apparent to any would-be UFO researcher is the overwhelming amount of data and evidence accumulated in support of the reality of flying saucers. Literally tens of thousands of reports of sightings and or encounters with aliens of some type are available for consideration, even now more than ever in 2022. Thousands of allegedly authentic pictures and videos of unidentified aerial objects are viewed or studied each year. Hundreds of thousands of books, articles, websites, and films are simply dedicated to the wide dissemination of the alien lifeform hypothesis. This worldwide enigma is so prevalent in nearly every culture that it simply cannot be comfortably suggested that all the witnesses are either lying or mistaken in their conclusions. If even one of these witnesses' testimony is correct and accurate, then it would be wise of people around the world to give some serious consideration of the possibilities this notion suggests. If even one person is telling the truth, then we are being visited by frighteningly powerful entities from somewhere else, somewhere far beyond our own perceptions and powers of scrutiny. And contrary to most popular opinions, they may not have our well-being ultimately in mind as they go about their highly mysterious business. Late one winter night in 1971 in Reed, Kentucky, Henderson County, Mrs. R.N. closed the Christmas catalog she had been looking through with her oldest daughter, Deanna, and rose to exit the room. As she switched off the light, she noticed a strange red glow coming through the window from somewhere outside. She walked over and looked out, and what she saw frightened her enough to awaken her husband and five other sleeping children and flee the location in terror, never to return. According to her, what she saw was a glowing red disc-shaped object 
as it slowly descended from the night sky and landed behind an old overgrown barn. An overwhelming feeling of fright had come over her as she had watched. The family dogs, which usually barked at and accosted any outside visitors to the property, had been strangely silent. This incident took place on Collins Road at an isolated farmhouse, which sat near the banks of the Green River, and Barton can personally attest to the fact that the event actually took place as stated. Mrs. R.N. is his own mother, and he was among those six children who were forced to beat a hasty retreat from that location that cold night nearly 40 plus years ago. He was only five years old at the time. Over the course of the ensuing years, he has personally witnessed phenomena of this nature on numerous occasions and remains convinced that misidentification of natural phenomena or conventional aircraft cannot adequately account for all of these reports. One night in 1985, two brothers, Charles and David Gee and Barton, all members of a popular local band, pulled into the driveway of 10820 Carlinsburg Road, also in Reed, Kentucky, to set up for their first practice session at that address. When they pulled to a stop in front of the garage and killed the engine and the stereo, they heard a very loud noise coming from outside. All of them exited the vehicle, and the sound, which resembled the roar of a jet engine, became so deafening they had to cover their ears with their hands. In the night sky above the house, they saw three good-sized points of light flying slowly in a triangle formation. As it neared the house, the formation stopped for a split second, then each light shot away in different directions and was gone in the blink of an eye. One to the north, one to the south, and one that had shot straight up. The night was clear with very little cloud coverage and visibility was exceptional. Barton was somewhat taken aback by the experience, but the Gee brothers just shrugged. They had seen the same thing. They soon informed Barton only a couple of months earlier as it flew over their house on 3rd Street. On that occasion, however, it had flown silently. In the mid-1990s, another group of friends in Henderson County watched in amazement round lights cavorted in the sky just outside their home on Posse Road. The strange fears had repeatedly darted in and out of a large cloud bank as if they were playing a friendly game of cat and mouse. They were so concerned that they called the regional airport a few miles away in Geneva to ask what in the world was going on. The controllers did not know, they claimed, as they could see nothing on the radar. The witness, a Mr. John Webb, had kindly suggested that it might well be time to buy a new radar before terminating the conversation. Again, the validity and accuracy of this report is beyond question as both Barton and his wife were among the group who had witnessed the aerial display in Western Kentucky. The UFO phenomenon has become almost a commonplace occurrence, so much so that it is seldom officially reported. Due to the sheer magnitude of this reoccurring enigma, it can be safely assumed that for each sighting that is reported, hundreds if not thousands more never appear on any official report or in the local newspaper. The National UFO Reporting Center, or New Fork, lists some 428 known sightings from the state of Kentucky. Barton is aware of no official investigations which have taken place in regards to any of these incidents. Barton's last personal sighting of a UFO, as of this writing, took place on Christmas Eve in 2005, when himself and two friends, neither of whom had any interest nor even believed in the subject at hand, all observed a large red light as it hung stationary in the sky for around 10 minutes. As they had talked amongst themselves, it simply vanished into thin air and was gone. No one in the group was able to explain exactly what it was that they all saw, but they were all convinced that it was something out of the ordinary. In any event, these unidentified flying objects have been seen time and time again by witnesses of all walks of life in every part of the bluegrass state. In 1869, three scientists from Shelbyville, Kentucky, Shelby County, made an amazing announcement. 
Professor Winlock, Alvin Clark Jr., and George W. Dean all insisted that they had observed, and quite independently, small, brilliant lights traveling in straight, parallel lines across the surface of the moon during a lunar eclipse. The only human flights of that time were, of course, the fanciful variety, and no explanation could be given concerning the mysterious light's origins. One must reckon, however, that the odds of three separate scholars all hallucinating the same thing at the exact same moment must be astronomical indeed. In the summer of 1927, in Wolfe County, Kentucky, a mysterious airship was seen which reportedly resembled a replica of some huge flying fish, complete with tail and perfectly shaped fins extending out near the front and small, short ones near the rear of the craft. Though dirigibles were well in existence at the time, no flights were known to be taking place in the area on that day and, as of yet, no one has stepped forward to claim responsibility. September 7, 1959, a mail carrier in Whaling Ford, Kentucky, Fleming County, had reportedly observed a bluish disc-shaped object at ground level. While the witness looked on, it suddenly flew away on a horizontal trajectory, leaving behind a stained ring on the ground. No plausible explanations were forthcoming. April 23, 1997, Multiple witnesses observe a shiny triangular-shaped craft with a light at each point and a larger light emanating from a hole in the bottom. As it hovered above them in Williamstown, Kentucky in Grant County, it was perfectly noiseless, they claimed, and it shot a red beam of light straight up into the sky before it finally sped off at great speed. A bit of high strangeness took place on one evening at around 10 p.m. in Rowan County, Moorhead, Kentucky on November 21, 2003, and was subsequently investigated by the late UFO researcher Kenny Young. The episode started off with a frantic call to 911. A resident of Skaggs Road told the local dispatch that he had heard what sounded like an adult female desperately screaming for help from a field located behind his house near Adams Lane. He felt sure that some type of dire struggle had taken place as the woman had yelled, Help me! Oh God, somebody help me! For nearly two minutes, followed by a long, terrified, nonverbal shriek. Strangely, a UFO was apparently witnessed by as many as five other people descending into the same field only mere moments before the screams were heard. This was immediately followed by the strange craft's departure from the location in a westerly direction after it had rose from the field and hovered in the air for nearly a minute. One such witness, Dr. Virgil Davis, a University of Kentucky psychologist, had informed investigators that others had heard the screams as well, including his two sons who claimed they sounded like the woman was being torn apart. He later informed members of the Moorhead Police Department that he and his sons had observed a strange ball of light, which he could not explain, for at least 15 minutes just prior to the screaming sounds. Within moments, the scene was crawling with local police and rescue workers who found nothing to indicate a life and death struggle had taken place in the area. A thermal imaging device was then utilized in the search which lasted for nearly an hour and a half before being called off. The woman was never found. The area has a history of UFO activity. Moorhead, Kentucky is an estimated 45 miles south of Flemingsburg, Kentucky, where a crop formation appeared in a rye field in the spring of 2003. Just as in a court of law, it is unanimously accepted that the best possible witnesses to any event Fordian or otherwise are members of local law enforcement. These brave professionals are reliable, highly trained and skilled observers who often lay down their very lives for the citizens whose safety they are sworn to protect. The obvious integrity of their positions ensures that officers of the law become UFO witnesses. Their reports are taken very seriously. In 1993, not one, but two Jefferson County police officers had found themselves in just that position. 
Patrol Officer Kenny Downs of the Jefferson County Police Department in Louisville, Kentucky, had been asked to sit in as an observer for Officer Ken Graham, an experienced, well-respected helicopter pilot. Graham's partner had recently fallen ill, and he needed somebody to fill in for him. Downs knew the observer's, or spotter's, job was to watch the ground carefully while the pilot flies the chopper, identifying landmarks and possible obstacles, judging distances and tracking fleeing suspects. He agreed to help out, thinking it would be an interesting switch to fly over the streets instead of being on them, as was his usual routine. Little did he know how right he was. Downs reported for a temporary assignment on January 28th at 11 p.m. Downs was thrilled to view the ground, which was blanketed with two feet of freshly fallen snow from so far aloft. It was a crisp night and the skies were clear. What happened next is presented as chronicled in subsequent local newspapers. Two Jefferson County Air Unit police officers, described by their lieutenant as solid guys, swore they had a two-minute dogfight with a UFO during a routine helicopter patrol on Friday night. Two officers on the ground said they too spotted the object. The UFO, a glowing pear-shaped object the size of a basketball, literally flew circles around the chopper. Even though the flyers say they were moving at speeds approaching 100 miles an hour, in one blinding moment when both craft were hurtling toward each other, the UFO shot three baseball-sized fireballs out of its middle, all three officers said. The fireballs fizzled into nothing. Officers Kenny Graham and Kenny Downs haven't talked much about their Friday night flight over General Electric Appliance Park because they fear few will believe them, but they are convinced they weren't hallucinating. We both go to church every week, Downs said as a way of explaining how normal the two normally are. In fact, I might start going to church twice a week. Officer Mike Smith in his squad car below said he saw the object for only about a minute, but he confirmed the UFO shot three fireballs into the air and then disappeared. Officer Joe Smolensky said he tried for more than a minute to catch up to the object in the squad car. I've been looking for him for 14 years and I guess this is the closest I've come to something I couldn't explain. Lieutenant David Pope who was roused out of bed at 12.30 a.m. Saturday morning by a call from these startled officers had attested to their sanity and sincerity. These guys are totally solid guys, Pope had said. There's no doubt in my mind there was something out there. The night started out like every other night. Graham and Downs got to work around 6 p.m. and were soon in the air flying a routine patrol. Graham, 39, and an 11-year veteran was the pilot. Downs, 39, and a five-year veteran was the spotter. While in the air, they had received a call about a possible break-in near Sanford Avenue and the Butchel Bank Road. They flew off and quickly reached the area, which is near the northeast corner of Appliance Park at around 11.50 p.m. As they circled, Graham saw something that looked like a small fire off to his left. Dozens of bonfires had been lit around the county that night by revelers delighting in this new snowfall. But Graham soon decided it wasn't a fire. Downs shined his 1.5 million candle power spotlight on the object, which began to drift back and forth like a balloon as the light had washed over it. Then it gradually floated up to the helicopter's elevation about 500 feet above the ground, where it then hovered for a few more seconds. Then it took off at a speed I've never seen before, said Graham an experienced pilot. The object made two huge counterclockwise loops and finally approached the helicopter's rear. Graham, afraid the object would ram his tail rotor, pushed his speed above 100 miles an hour. The UFO shot past them and instantly climbed hundreds of feet in the air. It descended again and flew close to the helicopter. Graham had tried to close the gap with the object and it again flew away. As the UFO approached on a parallel course, the three fireballs burst out of its core. Scared, Graham banked away from the object. When we came back around, it was gone, Graham said. When the two returned to their base, Graham called the control tower at Stanford Field to ask if their radar had spotted anything unusual. It had not. Downs called the county's radio dispatchers to ask if anyone else had reported sightings. 
No one had. But the two did get confirmation from two officers on the ground, one of whom was Smith. I have no idea what it was, Smith had said, but his confirmation cheered the two flyers. It makes me feel better, Down said, that there are grown men out there who are sworn to protect this community and who saw the same thing. So, you ask, just what was that strange glowing object in the sky that skirmished with Jefferson County Police Helicopter last Friday night? The National Weather Service doesn't have a clue. The air traffic controllers at Standiford Field detected nothing unusual on their radar. The security staff at General Electric's Appliance Park, over which the apparent encounter took place, saw just the police helicopter. But a UFO investigator, while remaining non-committal about the Louisville case, said the description the police reported of a bright pear-shaped object that had shot three baseball-sized fireballs at them shortly before midnight does indeed match reports of UFO sightings from the 1940s and the 50s. Those reports, which have been carefully studied by government investigators, sounds an awful lot like the case you just reported to me, said Bill Pitts of Fork Springs, Arkansas, director of a UFO investigative group called Project Blue Book. Usually only 10 to 20% of the thousands of UFO sightings reported each year are unexplainable, said Walter Andrus, international director of the Mutual UFO Network, a Texas-based group that investigates sightings. Most of the time, he said, investigators find that something mundane caused the observance, anything from unusually bright planets to weather balloons to falling fragments of rockets. I believe that the people saw something, said Bob Myers, a star enthusiast and former president of the defunct Stargazers of Louisville Group. But I don't necessarily believe that they saw some kind of space vehicle driven by some kind of alien being. 99% of the time, there is an explanation. Whatever did happen, a Courier Journal story yesterday in which four police officers swore they had encountered a UFO provoked a spasm of interest. The police got calls from reporters, the TV tabloid show Hard Copy, and about 75 citizens, some of whom they said had had seen UFOs too. Although no one can say for sure, people with scientific backgrounds said yesterday that the UFO probably was not a plummeting meteorite. It didn't seem to be moving consistently in one direction, said Alan Johnson a professor of material science at the University of Louisville's Speed Scientific School. An incoming meteorite usually streaks across the sky, he claimed, while this one appeared to be dancing around. It's also not a lightning ball of fire. This phenomenon sometimes occurs during intense electrical storms, but last Friday night, the snow had stopped falling at around 7.48 p.m. The temperatures were in the 20s, the solid cloud cover was beginning to scatter, and Louisville experienced no thunder or lightning. No way, said Rick Lasher, a spokesman for the Louisville Office of the National Weather Service. It's also not a known aircraft. Although, said in context, many can exceed the 100 mile an hour at which the helicopter pilot said he was traveling when the UFO had zoomed past him and instantly climbed hundreds of feet. John Dressman, a professor of mechanical engineering at the speed of school, said he's not familiar with any military or other aircraft that can possibly climb that rapidly while moving forward. Dressman has one suspicion about what the pilots might have seen. Reflections, created by a heavy blanket of snow and thick cloud cover. I certainly would not question the credibility of the officers. They seem very reliable, he said. But there's a certain suspicion in my mind that the atmospheric conditions might have led to misconstruing of things. From about 1947 to 1969, the Air Force investigated UFO sightings in an effort known as Project Blue Book. They tracked just hundreds and hundreds of sightings. Dave Thurston, an Air Force spokesman in Washington, none of them proved to have any basis in fact or to be any threat to national security, so we stopped the study. But in 1988, about 150 of the people who had been involved in the researching of UFOs for the military intelligence or other federal agencies had actually banded together to recreate Project Blue Book as a civilian agency. According to Pitts, 
The director, the sightings during the early decades, many of which were reported by astronomers, pilots, and astronauts, were so intriguing that we think there's a definite possibility or probability that the better ones are extraterrestrial. Between 6 and 7 p.m. on July 28, 1880, many citizens in Louisville, Kentucky, were treated to a very peculiar sight in the form of a strange-looking object as it flew above the treetops of the fair city. As it drew near, they were all shocked and amazed that it looked to be a man sitting within and completely surrounded by some type of strange machinery. Witnesses reported that this man was frantically working said machinery with both hands and feet, pushing and tugging at many gears and levers that surrounded him and all the while pedaling with his feet like a cyclist. The faster this figure pedaled, witnesses noted the more altitude the object gained. The slower he pedaled, the lower it flew, and it was obvious to the onlookers present that the man was controlling the object with his movements. The entire apparatus continued on its way, disappearing into the sky as darkness fell. Dispatchers from Madisonville, Kentucky, soon followed describing an airborne object seen there as well. It was already circular, sometimes changing shape to oval, with balls at either end. It passed out of sight, heading south, leaving the citizenry quite alarmed and wondering what in the world the object could have been. Much was the same in Louisville, but the locals there hadn't long to wait for another visit. Nine days later, on August 6th, the Phantom Pilot was again observed over the city as he made his return voyage to whatever place these bizarre men called home. One morning, in 1973, a Russell County woman reportedly observed a two three-foot-tall reddish-skinned humanoids near her house in Russell Springs, Kentucky. The entities were seen walking around the carport near the side of her house and entering a small washtub-shaped craft sitting on the ground near the backyard. The strange-looking vehicle then rose over the top of the house and vanished. According to Russell Springs Times Journal, October 24, 1973, the little men resembled small humans, aside from their red skin, but walked in a peculiar manner, as if on tiptoes. The ground was reportedly disturbed where the craft had been sitting. These allegedly alien entities have presented themselves to mankind in many guises, displaying diverse characteristics. Elusiveness isn't always one of them. Sometimes these entities are reported to actually initialize personal physical contact with witnesses, often of a sinister nature, though only rarely are instances of dire personal injury or even death reported in association with, or as of a result of, these otherworldly visits. Nevertheless, as of 2002, which I know, 20 years ago, over 3.5 million Americans claimed that they had believed they had been abducted by aliens at some point in their lives. In fact, one Kentucky incident involving UFOs and their occupants had occurred back in the wintertime of 1976 in Lincoln County, which would become one of the most quoted cases of alleged alien abductions in the history of the entire phenomenon. But more importantly, what do you guys think? Are all these cases of UFO sightings and alien abductions, are they all fictitious and made up, or is there actual grounded truth to any of these? I'll let you guys be the judge. As always, let me know what you think in the comments down below, and if you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to give that like button a good old smack, and hit that subscribe button as well if you are not already. As always guys, I love you all, keep an open mind, and I'll check you guys out in the very next video.